friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And today I'm going to be using only herbs from my garden to make a natural bug repellent that can be used on your garden plants and also on your person. Though I admit right off the bat, I have not yet tried it on myself. Uh, it should work, but I, I don't have any experience on that yet. I really don't have a big problem getting bit by bugs. They don't seem to like me. It's either because I eat a lot of garlic or because I have a high iron count in my blood. But needless to say, it's just not an issue for me. However, I think this should be helpful for those who are looking for something that is all natural, totally toxin free. Now, when I first started making a bug repellent to spray on my garden plants, though it was all natural, I was using rhubarb leaf. And so that meant I could only spray it on the parts of the plants that I was not going to eat, such as maybe the uh, when I'm growing the any kind of hot pepper, a lot of times there's a certain bug that I don't know what it is. I haven't actually seen it, but it likes to eat the, the tiny plants as they're starting to grow. And so if I spray it with that, it would keep them off that. Now I'm not planning on eating the baby pepper plants, so that wasn't a problem. But rhubarb leaf is toxic to humans and to most animals, but not to all insects. I was only spraying it on there as a form of an insecticide, which was working in some cases, but not in all. Where this seems to be working pretty good all the way around and is totally safe for humans. So that way, if I spray it on my, my uh, bok choy or lettuce leaves or anything else that I'm, I might want to go out there and pick and eat right away and kind of forget that maybe I need to rinse it off, then I don't have to worry about the toxins in it. So what I've gathered up here, it, and here's the spray I made uh, a week or so ago, and it's been working pretty good. My bok choy is finally having a chance to grow without being totally demolished. And so that's the batch I made. I'm going to try to make this batch a little bit stronger. So what I have here is I cut off a whole bunch of garlic greens because I don't want to dig up my garlic yet. Garlic is one of those things that's a good bug repellent. But the garlic greens, if you've never eaten a garlic green, I like to just snack on these out in the garden, especially the younger leaves because they're more tender. As they get bigger, they get a little tough. But they have, they have a pretty strong garlic taste just in the leaves alone. Just think of green onions. They are very similar. And if you look at your garlic greens, no bugs eat on these things. So that will tell you right there, bugs do not like them. So I'll be chopping that up. And then the other thing is I have mostly peppermint and orange mint in here. Those are some pretty strong mints. Again, the bugs do not like them. They do not eat them. I put a little bit of mojito mint, but I try to go for the real strong ones. So I've got a bunch of that. I'm looking at pretty much equal parts of each of these. And I have a total of five herbs that I'm using. The other one is oregano. So go with the spiciest oregano. So if you're growing oregano, maybe a few different varieties. Like I have, I think I have three Two of them are quite hot. I think I have a Greek and an Italian uh, oregano. Then I have the golden oregano, which is very mild. Now I'm not going to be using that because that, because it is a real mild one, it does not get devoured by the bugs, but I don't have a lot of that and I'm trying to get as, as much of the really strong potent stuff in this as possible. And then another herb, let me dig down here. Another one that is a really great insect repellent. In fact, you can take the leaves of this. I'm sure you can do this with peppermint as well. And you can just rub it right on your skin if you're wanting to use it on yourself as a bug repellent. You know, just rub it right on there. Really work the oils out of it. And uh, that's one way to do it. But it seems to me it would be easier to make a spray that you can just spray all over yourself. So that's kind of what I got going on here. So this is catnip, if I didn't say already. Uh, catnip has so many great uses. I have a video on this. I'll go ahead and link to it right here. Catnip is one of those things I use as a natural uh, analgesic or painkiller as well as anti-inflammatory. And it works pretty good for me. I'll eat it straight off the plant. I also make extracts and tinctures using the catnip. 
And then the other one I go right along with that for the same purposes as the catnip is the feverfew. And um, now's a good time. I've got feverfew growing. I want to get it before it flowers and try to get a bunch more made because I want to also dehydrate a bunch. And so those of you who got feverfew seed from me, once you establish, all you need it to do is establish just one plant this year. And then next year, you'll have tons more plants coming up. In fact, I have them coming up all over my garden that I'm constantly having to pull up. I'm just keeping about, oh, I, I still grow quite a few here and there. So I have a couple out front and then I have like maybe five or six scattered around out back. Now the thing about feverfew and pretty much all of these herbs is sort of, they're similar to marigolds in the fact is growing them right in your garden. Like a lot of people don't like to grow mints in their garden. I do. I just try to keep them controlled as much as possible because mints and feverfew, like the catnip and the oregano are in the mint family, by the way. But the, these things, all of these things actually that I'm showing you, I grow here and there all throughout my garden because just growing them in the garden is going to help prevent pests. But one of the places I'm not growing any of these is in my greenhouse. And the greenhouse is where, right now, is where most of my bok choy is, and it's getting chewed all to bits. And also, I don't grow all this stuff right next to my beans, and a lot of my bean plants are getting destroyed. Now, not by slugs, mind you. The slugs we've got under control. Thank the Lord for that. Thank you. Thanks to my chickens. And, uh, but... Anyway, something is still eating on my bean leaves, but what I found is that using this spray daily on the bok choy and on the bean leaves and my lettuces has really worked well keeping the bugs from devouring it. Now these will not kill the bugs per se, but it will make the plants distasteful to them so they won't eat them. <laughs> and I actually, as much as I really hate the flavor of feverfew, with all of this mixed together, when I tasted what I made, I, I had to taste it just out of curiosity. I didn't actually mind the flavor of it. I thought it tasted kind of good, but thankfully the bugs do not like it. So I don't mind the flavor of it. So if I get it on my lettuces and stuff and then I just eat it, I don't even notice it. It all tastes good straight off of the, out of the garden. But as long as the bugs hate it and leave my stuff alone, that's what really matters. So all I'm gonna do is I'm going to, um, I would suggest kind of mashing these up a little bit to really kind of get the oils and the juices out from the plants from inside the leaves. But I'm just going to chop all this up and put it in my pot here. I'm kind of looking at how much I have here. I'm not sure if this pot's big enough, but I do want a very strong batch. I want to make it even stronger than this one because, you know, we get rain and watering every day, it's going to rinse the stuff off. So I want to make sure I have plenty to keep spraying it every day. And that's just really, and the really great thing about this is all of this is free. It didn't cost me anything. It's just coming straight from my garden. And then I'm turning around and putting it back on the garden to help everything grow. So I'm going to get busy chopping this up and then I'll show you what I do next. Okay, now that I got this all chopped up and in the pot, I'm just going to kind of knead it a little bit. And you saw that I had to change pots because as I thought, that one was too small. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a decoction out of this pretty much, or a tea or an infusion. Uh, infusion is a decoction stronger than infusion. So I want it more of a de decoction. I want it as strong as I can get it. And with it like this, um, once I add the water and start cooking it down, it's going to, the herbs are going to soften, they're going to take up a lot less room. And then a lot of the, more of the liquids inside there are going to come out. But that's also why I'm kind of squeezing it and smashing it. And also the main reason I chopped it up. And you can see I just kind of just hacked it up. I don't, I'm not real concerned about getting it any specific size. I just want it as much exposed, as much as possible to the water. Okay, and now I'm going to top it off with some 
some of my rainwater here. There we go, that's what I thought, a whole gallon. Okay, and now you can see what this looks like here. All right, and now I'm gonna put the lid on there and then I'm going to go ahead and put it on my, um, I could go light the rocket stove, but it's kind of threatening to rain, so I think I'll wait on that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put it on my hot plate that's hooked up to our solar power. And I'm going to turn it on medium to get a uh, real warm and then I'll turn it down to low and then I'm going to let it simmer for at least a half an hour. All right. Well, I've let it steep for quite a while. I simmered it for a while and then I just let it sit and cool off. And now I'm about to strain it out. So I've got my big eight cup batter bowl here and the largest mesh strainer. And I know I'm going to make a mess. Hey, not too bad. And of course the eight cups is not enough because you saw me throw, pour in a whole gallon of water. But you can see here what the color looks like. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna top off this bottle. I can tell it's darker than my last batch. Okay. So then I'll just use this to spray my plants. Again, you can just spray this on yourself if you're trying to keep bugs off yourself. And that should be helpful. All right, now, depending on where you're at, the types of bugs that you're dealing with, and you know, different plant destroying things, you may find that this solution alone isn't gonna cut it. I would say at least try it first to see, but if this isn't gonna cut it, and, uh, you know, assuming, of course, that you're already growing all these herbs. If you're not growing all these herbs, you may need to look into some other things to use anyway. But if you already have these herbs growing, this is a way to start. Now, just to rehash, the reason why I went with this and came up with this blend, there's several reasons why. One is because frugality. I don't have to buy anything to make this. It's totally free because it's all from my garden with some filtered rainwater, and that's it. Um, also, because I do like to eat my lettuces and bok choy straight from the garden, and I want to spray something on there that's going to both taste okay and be totally safe, and um, yeah, and so I don't have to worry about it. Totally toxin-free, nothing that's going to hurt me, and so that's the other reason why I'm going to go like this. So it's frugal. It's safe, I can do it right from my own garden and it tastes okay. Now, if you need to up the potency or add something more to it to make it so, because maybe you've got certain kind of insects that just, this isn't gonna cut it to get rid of them or to keep them from eating your plants. There's two things that I recommend you add and I used to add these things to my um, previous batch that I was making with a rhubarb leaf. I've been doing that for a couple years and it does work really well. And that is uh, the Dr. Bronner's peppermint soap. I would say about up to a tablespoon, a teaspoon to a tablespoon at the most in a bottle this size. And you just shake it up and that's going to work really good. And even this is totally non-toxic and safe, but I don't like using it because if I eat that bok choy leaf, it's going to taste like soap. <clears throat> now, I have a link to this below, and I think that I like buying by the gallon because it's this the most economical way to go. But if you would prefer, Vitacost also carries their own brand of Castile soap that they don't carry the gallon size, but I think they carry a quart size, if I remember correctly. And I think if you buy four quart bottles, it may be equal in price, maybe even less than buying this bottle from Amazon, uh, you know, the, the gallon bottle. I have a lot of these because I stocked up a while ago because it was just a good price. The other option, or you can use it as well, would be the neem oil and I bought this a while back and I again with this I would say up to a tablespoon is about all you need in a spray bottle this size I think this is 16 ounces and um, but you have to be sure that before you spray it on you shake it up really good because this is an oil which means it's going to float to the top 
of your tea blend and you want to keep it you want to keep it mixed in there before you spray it on there now neem oil is also very safe this is organic and it's it's not going to hurt you but it tastes terrible another reason i don't want to spray this on here on my plants i'd like to get away from having to use it because of that it's just got a nasty nasty flavor but it's totally safe and you can use it on your skin it's actually good for your skin and so you could if you're going to do it like spray it on yourself to prevent mosquitoes and stuff then i recommend going this way but here's the other thing it doesn't smell very great either so you got to kind of weigh out what's going to work for you what you can handle do you mind smelling like this if you're going to go somewhere if 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 it doesn't bother you if if not being bit my, by mosquitoes is more important then um i recommend you do that add that to your spray and again it's it is totally safe but you may also want to look into because some things i i kind of fail to look up is how safe are certain herbs for children and pregnant women those are the two things you uh, you need to look into and also certain medications uh, can interfere with using some of this stuff but we're looking at using this topically so I'm thinking it should be fine but don't trust my word for it alone because again I don't have any kind of degrees or certificates or anything and all this stuff it's just stuff I learn as I go and then I pass the information on to you as I'm learning it so what I'm going to do with the excess of this is after I strain it all out obviously i'm going to need more than this i'll probably need two half gallon jars and i'll be storing it in these jars just with a lid like this and then i can just refill my bottle from there i should have enough to get me through the worst part of the season for the bugs and keeping them off my plants using this so anyway i hope that my little frugal little recipe of making your own totally safe non-toxic bug spray uh, works for you and if you try to use it as a bug spray for yourself to keep mosquitoes off I am very curious to know how well it works so please comment back or you can send me an email um, to raincountryhomestead at gmail.com and let me know how it works for you I'd really appreciate that then I could share that information on in other videos as we go along and I do some updates all right well I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned something new thanks for watching take care God bless.